Let it boil and I'm quitting alcohol. So I've really had to rethink my ideas on revolution. I've got 19 hours left of the fucking five volume epic Conceived in Liberty by Murray Rothbard. And honestly, I feel like I should fucking probably listen to it again. I won't listen to the whole thing. I'll just go through the chapters that I find most interesting. But my idea of revolution was like, let's just start a revolution. (laughs) That's as fucking deep as I had ever thought into it. I'm like, yeah, I hate these cunts. Let's start a revolution. Who's with me? And after 60 hours of listening to this book, you realize, oh, it's not just like, hey, let's start a revolution. There's a couple of things that need to happen. There's a million things that need to happen for a successful revolution. But it struck me today that the main thing is you have to have a united population because the British did try and divide and rule the Americans before the revolution, but the Americans held together as one. They were like, no fucking way. So usually you get some turncoats or some people who fucking, you get some Judases, some people who are just like, all right, we'll fucking team up with the British and they'll give us something. It's better than trying to fight the British and get our independence. We'll probably get crushed, but not in America. They were like, let's, Fucking, this is our country. We built this shit. Fuck the British. And they were all in on it. Even though the fucking colonies were like completely separate entities for the most part. You got your Virginias, your Massachusetts, your New Yorks, Rhode Islands, etc. And they really had nothing in common besides the fact they wanted to be free. That was their galvanizing, uniting idea. Freedom and property. Liberty and property, they called it. So divide and rule had worked on everyone, everywhere, in all of history, except the Americans at this time. And the other thing is, it was not even a guarantee that the colonizers, the British colonizers were going to beat the Indians. The Indians fucking turned on each other half the time. One tribe of Indians would team up with the British to fuck over another tribe, and then the British would just turn on that tribe and fucking lull them into a field and just massacre them all. (laughs) It's fucking brutal. If the Indians the American Indians, and the Indians in fucking India when the British came into actual India with the East Indian Tea Company. If they had galvanized together as well, how the fuck could a little English fucking tea company, even though they were financially the most powerful company in the entire world at the time, but still, if the Indians had just stuck together and galvanized around an idea like let's fuck the British off, then they would have not been ruled by fucking the British for 400 years. And the same with the American Indians. If the tribes just all came together and said, all right, we'll go back to our squabbles and our inter-tribe rivalries after we get the fucking British out of here. After we get Whitey out of here, then we'll go back to business as usual, all right? We can all hate each other after that. Because that was what galvanized whiteys against the Indians. They had nothing, not that much in common, most of the whiteys. But they were all like, all right, we're whiteys and Indians are Indians. Let's just get the Indians. The same thing happened with the Aboriginals in Australia. Like the Aboriginals weren't one people. They were like thousands of different tribes with thousands of different languages and they lived separately to the other Aboriginals, and there was like intertribe rivalries, all that sort of shit. So when Whitey came in, they didn't work together as like a, a team, like the Aboriginals versus Whitey. It was more like fucking 
all right, our tribe's here, and and then they just got fucking atomized, divided, conquered, ruled, smashed. The Maoris in New Zealand were a little bit fucking more successful because they were one people. There was like a Maori head, or if there was like more than one tribe, there was like a couple of tribes or whatever. But the Maoris came together as one, and they ended up for the most part being able to hold off the British to some degree. Anyway, you look at the world today and you're like, all right, it's so fucking divided. There's no like guiding ideology for an entire country or people to get behind to like overthrow a tyrannical government. You know what I mean? When you're trying to get a revolution off the ground, you can't have people who are going to fucking compromise, like give up halfway. Like, this is good. We've gone far enough. We got most of what we wanted. Like, let's just, let's just end it here. Is it, who's with me? And like 17 people are like, yeah, I'm pretty happy with. And like the people who are trying to fucking push it all the way. No, we, if we don't go all the way, we've got nothing. These will just get peeled back. Whatever they give us is just a token gesture and eventually will be subjugated again. They will be peeled back. We need to go all the way. Not a lot of people have the stomach for that. Like if you look at the US at the moment, it's too divided for revolution. A revolution would be taking down and replacing all the power structures. You need bipartisan support for that. You need the Republicans and the Democrats to be in lockstep, just go, all right, let's put down our differences for the moment and let's just clean house. We'll clean house and then we'll restart and we'll go back to our old bickering once we've cleared the swamp, to be honest with you. (laughs) Yeah, so there's just not the cohesiveness, unity in the US for a revolution, which is what's needed again. But there's definitely the divisiveness for a civil war, a split of some sort. And you would think it would be down those lines, Republican, Democrat, whatever that means now. The warmongering fucking Republicans, Cheney, Rumsfeld, just backed the Democratic fucking Kamala Harris. So whatever conservative liberal maybe even that's fucking blurry as fuck but there's definitely the charge for a civil war a split but what needs to be happening is there needs to be a uniting ideology a new uniting ideology that will bring another couple of hundred years of fucking freedom before the hounds of hell start closing in again I always thought we're real close to revolution. I thought the people will one day just wake up and go, enough is enough. But if the American Revolution and all the stuff this guy's saying about revolutions and how they come about and how they are won, then we are quite some way away. That's if you're talking about a violent, historic, the same sort of revolution that's happened throughout history the violent revolution that overthrows power structures but there's one bubbling away in the background that people are sort of ignoring it may be a peaceful revolution if enough people wake up to it then no blood needs to be shed and you all know what i'm going to say don't you it's bitcoin buy some fucking bitcoin remove yourself from the fucking system Enough is enough. Anyway, that'll fucking do it for tonight. I'm getting another eight hours sleep again tonight, so I'm fucking out of here. And I'll see you the fuck later.